Phil Davis is a technology expert from Hertfordshire and uh, joins us uh, live on the programme this morning. Uh, morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, just talk to us about what this latest thing that, that's out now, that, that the tablet as a whole, because for many people, they won't even have known that a tablet even exists. Good morning, Simon. Yes, now that's right. Well, a tablet uh, machine is an alternative, I suppose, to a laptop, but it's somewhere in between a laptop and probably a mobile phone. The facilities that you have on it, they're maybe not as maybe varied, shall we say, as a laptop is. But then in comparison to a phone, you'll be able to see things on a larger screen. You'll be able to connect to the Internet, look up documents in a hurry. There's loads of different features, including over 10,000 applications in some of them that you can do so many different things. Like, for example, if you've ever been on the train or the bus or something and you want to look up something, in the past, people would be so reluctant to get out their laptop because of the time they have to wait for things to boot up and to actually get anywhere. Well, now it, it's virtually instant. So tablet technology just makes sense. And it's not just Apple. I mean, the, these are not just made by Apple. The, the famous one, and everyone is going to be some, the, those who love it will be queuing up this afternoon for the Apple uh, iPad 2. But, but other people make them. Oh, absolutely. There's loads of different companies that are out there that are trying to introduce them. BlackBerry is one. Samsung is another. Loads of different companies. They're all trying to rival the iPad, which at the moment is the best-selling tablet, purely based on the fact that it's the best-known one. Is, is it something that will, um, in a way, take over from people's traditional computers at home? I mean, if you have an iPad or a, a tablet computer, can you then dump your big hard drive and your keyboard and your, and your big screen, which takes over you know, half of your spare bedroom? There are pros and cons to it. I mean, technically, at the moment, you do still need a desktop computer or a laptop to connect to most tablets. And this is because there are various things in them. Like, for example, there's no CD-ROM drive. There's no USB ports in most of them. Oh, yeah. And as a result of it, you will need to transfer data from a main machine. But there's nothing to say that in years to come, it won't become the normal. And yes, absolutely. You know, we live in a much more compact age, don't we? We want small smaller devices. We want things to be less intrusive. It doesn't seem that long ago when computers took up a whole room. Well, now, if you think about the laptop, the next step from the laptop is probably tablet technology. And just lastly, I mean, when these things first came out, uh, as it is with all these things, whenever some grand new invention is made, people think, well, what am I supposed to do with this? People didn't really know what they were for, why they should invest in that and a phone and a computer. Is that attitude changing now? I'm not 100% sure it will change just yet, purely based on that at the moment I don't really think tablets have a distinctive function just yet. I think they're still very much trying to find their feet in the heart of people who are lovers of technology, uh, whereas obviously the mobile phone revolutionised things, the personal computer revolutionised things. I don't think tablet is at a stage of revolutionising, but I think it's the start of something big when we find what we want them for. Phil, it's great to talk to you. Thank you for joining us live this morning. Phil Dave, who's a technology expert from Hertfordshire on the uh, the rise and rise of the tablet computer. Have you got one? I mean, use it. Is, it, is it of any use whatsoever? What do you use yours for? Have you seen them and if you run a million miles away for fear, you have absolutely no idea how to use them. 8.46. Beds, hearts and bucks travel. BBC Three